myself Sayed Khalid Hassan, Associate Professor of Chemistry from Institute of Technology and Management, Gida Gorakhpur. Today we will going to study about fuel. The main agenda of this lecture is the introduction of fuel, classification of fuel, character characteristics of good fuel, calorific value, gross calorific value and net calorific value and determination of calorific value by bomb calorimeter. The fuel is carbonaceous combustible substance which on combustion liberates a large amount of heat, energy and light which is called as fuel. During the process of combustion of a fuel, the atom of carbon, hydrogen etcetera combined with oxygen with simultaneous liberation of heat. The calorific value of a fuel depends mainly on two elements, these are carbon and hydrogen. Carbon combines with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and heat is produced and hydrogen on combination with oxygen to form water molecule with simultaneous liberation of heat. Methane which is a fuel you have been burnt which forms carbon dioxide and water molecule with liberation of heat. The value of heat, the value of fuel depends upon the quantity and intensity of the heat obtained per unit of mass of the fuel. Heat evolved by burning of fuel can be employed for heating, cooking, drying and many other industrial processes. Classification of fuel. Fuel is classified on the basis of its occurrence and on the basis of its physical state. On the basis of occurrence, fuels are primary and secondary. The primary fuels which are obtained from nature and they are used as such without any processing and secondary fuels are, they are derived from the primary fuels by chemical processing. On the basis of physical state, the fuels are of three types, solid fuel, liquid fuel and gaseous fuel. Here in the table, the solid fuel, primary fuels are wood, peat, coal and lignite and secondary fuels are charcoal and coke which are derived from coal. Liquid fuels are crude petroleum oil and after refining we get petrol, kerosene, diesel, synthetic petrol etcetera as secondary fuel. Similarly, gas, the natural gas is primary fuel and producer gas, water gas, coal gas, biogas and liquefied petroleum gas LPG, they are all secondary fuels. The characteristics of an ideal fuel. The first very important property is the calorific value should be very, very high. What is calorific value? The calorific value is the amount of heat liberated on complete combustion of unit mass of a fuel. Then second property, it should have moderate ignition temperature. Ignition temperature, the minimum temperature at which any substance catch fire. So, the ignition temperature should not be very high or very low. If ignition temperature is very high, then additional amount of heat is required for burning. And if ignition temperature is very low, so the substance becomes explosive. Third point, no toxic gases. On combustion, there should not be release of any toxic gas like nitrogen oxide or sulfur oxide gases. It should, should not be polluting. The fuel should not create any type of pollution on combustion. Next point. It should have moderate rate of combustion. The com rate of combustion should not be very high. Sixth point, combustion should be easily controllable. Easily controllable means whenever we need it may be cut off. So, 
if gaseous fuel or liquid fuels are used, they can be controlled by switches and knobs, but solid fuel cannot be controlled by switches. Next point, it should not leave any type of incombustible ash. Incombustible ash means the, the remains after burning which are left behind. Then point, it should be easily available. Next point, low moisture content, it is a very good quality of uh, uh, fuel if it is, ha it is having very low moisture because the moist due to the moisture, the ignition temperature of fuel is increased. The next point, it should be very cheap, it, its cost should be low. Next point, it should be handled easily and easily tra easy transportation. The supply of fuel should be continuous. So, liquid fuel and solid uh, uh, gaseous fuels can be supplied through pipelines, but solid fuel are supplied by batch method. And then the last point is, it should occupy minimum storage space. Calorific value. The calorific value of a fuel is defined as the, the amount of heat, quantity of heat liberated on complete combustion of unit mass of the substance. The units are calorie per gram, joule per gram, kilo calorie per gram or kilo joule per gram. There are two types of calorific value, one is higher or gross calorific value and other is lower or net calorific value. Higher calorific value is defined as when a substance, when a fuel is burnt in an environment, the volatile substances are condensed and the latent heat is added to the net calorific value. So, net calorific value is always lower and gross calorific value is always higher. The net calorific value when fuel is burnt in open environment and all the volatile substances are allowed to escape out. The relation between net calorific value and gross calorific value, if a substance contains hydrogen, then hydrogen on combustion changes to steam. The latent of its of heat of steam is about 587 calorie per gram. So, for calculation of net calorie value, the latent heat produced is subtracted from the gross calorie value. One, two moles of hydrogen combined with one mole of oxygen atom to form one mole of water. That is, two gram hydrogen gives 18 gram water and 1 gram hydrogen gives 9 gram of water. So, N C V is equal to G C V minus 0 0.09 hydrogen percentage into latent heat of the steam. By this expression, we can calculate net calorific value. By estimation of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and sulphur, if you know the percentage of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and sulphur in a fuel. So, directly by Dew Long's formula, we can calculate gross calorific value using this expression. Higher calorific value is equal to 1 upon 100 8080 80 carbon plus 34500 hydrogen minus oxygen upon 8 plus 2240 sulphur that is in calorie per gram, where carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and sulphur are the percentage of elements. Then after calculation of higher calorific value, L C V can be cal calculated by subtracting 9 H upon 100 into 587 calorie of steam latent heat. Units of heat. The main unit of heats are calorie, British thermal unit and centigrade heat unit. Calorie is defined as amount of heat required 
to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water through 1 degree Celsius about from 15 degree Celsius to 16 degree Celsius. Kilo calorie when amount of heat is required to raise the temperature of 1 kilogram of water through 1 degree Celsius from 15 degree Celsius to 16 degree Celsius. British thermal unit which is defined as amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 pound of water through 1 degree Fahrenheit from 60 to 61 degree Fahrenheit and amount of heat liberated amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 pound of water through 1 degree Celsius that is called as centigrade heat unit. There is a relation between kilo calorie British thermal unit and centigrade heat unit that is 1 kilo calorie is equal to 3.968 British thermal unit is equal to 2.2 centigrade heat unit. Now, determination of calorific value is using bomb calorie meter. Bomb calorie meter is a device which consists of a calorie meter. The calorie meter is made up of stainless steel or copper because when heat is produced it must withstand it is corrosion resistant. Second part is there is a system of thermometer for measuring initial and final temperature and there is a bomb which contains a crucible made of stainless steel in which fuel is taken and that fuel is connected with a battery through magnesium wire when battery is switched on. So, fuel is burnt and explodes in the calorie meter. The heat which is evolved by combustion of fuel from this portion that heat is absorbed by the water molecules water taken in the calorie meter. So, that the temperature is changed the change in temperature is determined by thermometer. This whole system is surrounded by an air jacket. This air jacket prevents the heat loss from bomb calorimeter to the environment. Then by using the formula gross calorific value is equal to capital W plus small w into T 1 minus T 2 upon m, where capital W is weight of water taken in the calorie meter, a small w is the weight of equi weight, uh, water equivalent of the calorie meter in kil gram or kilogram and T 1 is the initial temperature, T 2 is final temperature and m is the mass of fuel taken in the bomb. Since most of the fuel contains sulfur or nitrogen as impurities, so on burning sulfur it produces sulfur, sulfur oxide gases and nitrogen on burning nitrogen oxide gases. These oxides are dissolved in water to produce acid and that acid in water that is an exothermic reaction. So, some additional amount of heat is produced. Moreover, the magnesium wire is fused, so uh, some additional heat, uh, energy is also released. So, a corrective measure is taken and modified formula is used in which capital W plus the small w into T 1 minus T 2 plus T c minus acid correction and fusion correction. The heat produced by formation of sulfur oxide nitrogen of gases and by fusion of magnesium wire where and T c is the correction of that calorie meter in which bomb, um, uh, fuel was burnt. So, by using this expression we can calculate gross calorific value and gross cal uh, net calorific value can be calculated by estimation of hydrogen percentage. So, in this lecture we studied about the introduction of fuel, classification of fuel as solid, liquid and gaseous fuel, primary, secondary fuel, 
characteristics of good fuel, determination of gross and net calorific value, unit of heat and bomb calorimeter. There are some important questions. Here one question is why gross calorific value is high, higher than net calorific value? I told net calorific value is calculated when fuel is burned in open environment and all the volatile matters are allowed to escape out. So, that amount of heat, latent heat is not in included in calculation, therefore, net calorific value is always lower. Thank you.